start the day, I'd like to, I've got great pleasure in um, introducing our first guest speaker. Um, this individual um, is a daughter of a mathematician. Um, she's a trained accountant and um, is also, she was also elected to parliament in 2010. She's a strong believer in women in data and women in technology and actually believes that the way to solve some of these challenges is starting at the grassroots level and getting children and you know, kind of young adults to make sure they're studying STEM subjects until they're 18. So please join me in welcoming to the stage um, the Chief Secretary to the Treasurer, Liz Truss. Well, it's brilliant to be here this morning and to just have so many brilliant data people all in the same room, not to mention the dry ice, uh, which remembers, reminds me of my time in various discos. So fantastic to be here this morning. But it does strike me just how far we've come. Uh, I remember when I was at school in the 80s and 90s, uh, I used to be a member of our school computer club. Uh, I think there were only about four pupils in it. Uh, we used to learn how to program in basic. The internet basically hadn't been invented at that point. And now Britain is the world leader, uh, or one of the main world leaders in uh, technology, in data. You know, we've got a thriving industry. It's a huge proportion of our economy. Uh, we saw the number or the amount of investment in technology double uh, that's going into the UK just in the last year alone. I think we've got 22 unicorns, billion dollar tech companies in this country, which outpaces any other country in Europe. And we're now finding a lot of companies from the US, from Silicon Valley, want to locate here in the UK. So we have a really exciting industry. And it just makes me think, why was it all those years ago I wanted to be involved in technology? Why was I excited about computers? Why was I interested in spending my lunch times doing that? And I think there is just something really exciting about the ability to change the world but also the, the ability to control your own life. And what technology has enabled people to do is it's enabled people to set up businesses from their bedroom, uh, to be able to order uh, food and drink whenever they want, to be able to go uh, wherever they want. It really is empowering. And it's one of the main reasons why I think it's such a great industry for women. Uh, there is a massive opportunity to take control of your own life. And I was delighted uh, a few months ago on International Women's Day to have Pale, Re Rosen and Rachel all come to Number 11 Downing Street where we had a Women's Day takeover uh, of Number 11. And you may be aware that although we've had two female Prime Ministers, we've had a female Foreign Secretary, we've also had a female Home Secretary, we've never had a female Chancellor. And I wanted to send the message across to people that actually being able to talk about mathematics, being able to talk about economics, being able to talk about technology, that is core women's business. And that's why I wanted to have those women in number 11 that day. And you may all have seen the report that the Institute for Fiscal Studies put out this week about university degrees. And I thought it was fascinating because it showed that women benefit far more in terms of their earnings from going to university I think by the age of 28, you're likely to earn 26% more if you're a woman. It's only 8% more if you're a man. And it won't surprise any people in this room to hear that the subjects where you're likely to earn most are subjects like mathematics, economics, and engineering. Because they lead, they open the doors to lots and lots of opportunities. And the issue we've got is that fewer women are going into those subjects than men. And this starts from quite an early age. So what we know is that even though girls are just as good at maths at age nine or 10, they don't think they're as good. And by the time they get to 16 and they have to make a decision about what to study for A-level, even though they get as many A's at GCSE in maths as boys, 70% of boys with A's go on to take A-level maths. It's only 50% of girls. So even though they're brilliant, they don't know they're brilliant. 
And that, I think, is the fundamental issue that we've got. So I worked with Edwina Dunn, who's already been mentioned, a fascinating, fantastically inspirational woman, set up Dunn Humby, the basis of the Tesco club card. But I worked with her on the Your Life campaign about how do we get the message across to those young girls at school that actually by studying these subjects, by being interested in computing, by being interested in technology, by taking STEM subjects, that they will be able to have more control and more power over their own lives. And you know, as a government, we've put in place a maths premium so schools get extra money if students study maths. I would dearly love uh, it to be compulsory to age 18. I think it's such an important life skill. And we're looking at what more we can do to really inspire that next generation. Now, I also work in a very male-dominated profession of politics. And the, the advice I would give everyone in this room is that you have to make yourself heard. Sometimes it can feel uncomfortable to speak out. Sometimes it can feel uncomfortable to call out things that you don't like out. Sometimes it can feel difficult to keep pressing your point when you're being ignored. But we have to do that, and that is what changes the culture. And in my time in Parliament over the last eight years, I've seen the culture in politics change. And I think it's possible to change culture in any industry, but what it takes is those people who are prepared to speak out, who are prepared uh, to make a difference and say uh, they want to do things differently. I also think we've got a massive opportunity in government to use technology much better. One of my passions is open data. Uh, when I was at DEFRA, uh, we opened up lots of land data. We've got lots of opportunities through tax data in the tax system. And some of those figures I was just telling you about the earnings premium for university, we know that because of data. We know that because we're able to link what people earn at age 28 with which, which university they went to and which course they studied. And that just shows how we can change people's thinking about the world by using data to be able to do that. Now, you may have heard that there is going to be a new £50 note. I don't know if anyone in the room has heard that. And it's going to be, for the first time, a scientist is going to be on that £50 note. And can I just say, wouldn't it be brilliant if that was a female scientist? And my top nomination is Ada Lovelace because she was fundamentally behind some of the ideas, some of the ideas that led to the development of computing and led to the development of the internet. And for those of you who have not yet uh, visited Number 10 Downing Street, and I hope to find an opportunity for, uh, to have some more events to celebrate the brilliant, uh, brilliant women in technology, we have a big portrait of Ada Lovelace in the Number 10 dining room. But I think it would be a brilliant thing if women in data could actually campaign for Ada to be on the £50 note. Because what kind, of message, what kind of message would that send to girls and women across the country about how important this field is, how much more uh, they could tr contribute to our country uh, if they got involved? I think we've made massive progress. I don't think there would have been an event like this even five years ago. I think we've made massive progress, and I hugely congratulate the women in data organisation. But we still have a long way to go. We still have a long way to go. And the way we are going to get there is by being visible and vocal. And I encourage you all to be visible and vocal. I encourage you to get out there and talk about what you do, because I do a lot of school visits. I meet you know, 13, 14 year olds, and not enough of them know about the massive opportunities there are in this industry. Not enough of them understand their potential that they have with inside them to, uh, to, really, to really motor and really shape their own destiny. And I think the more people we can get out, the more positive examples we can get out, the more we can use things like social media to communicate this, the more we can have campaigns about what's on the 50 pound net. All of those things will help raise the profile and get more women involved. But I'm delighted and really flattered to be invited uh, to launch today's proceedings. And I wish you all the best and let's make it an even bigger conference. And I don't know where you could hire next year, but uh, maybe Westminster Hall. <laughs> Great to see you. Thank you very much.
so much, Liz, um, and it's fantastic to, to hear your perspective. Um, we'd actually like to open it up to, to questions, mm. if possible. Um, so, you know, while we can start to see some hands go up, um, <laughs> let, me, let me start. I want to start with the upper tier. Does anyone have a question up there? I know we've got some mics. It's quite hard to see down here. Do we have any questions? Yep. Hi. Um, you said your dad was a mathematician. I just wondered how much that affected your upbringing and if you think that helped. Yeah, he, he still is a mathematician, actually. He's still lecturing at Leeds University. He's 71, but he won't give up because he's got a massive passion for the subject. And it definitely, it definitely does uh, have an impact on you. And I think there's a lot of evidence that girls are more likely to go into professions like engineering, computing, mathematics, if they have got a parental role model. And that's why I think role models are so important. And if the encouragement isn't necessarily coming from the home, what more can we do to get the message through in schools? What more can we do to get young people into business and industry? But he's certainly somebody that believes that everybody, whatever background they're from, whatever gender they are, that you know, studying these subjects is really important and exciting. And that was a massive inspiration. Thank you, Liz. Any other questions on the top? Maybe while we're waiting for the next person to, to speak with the mic, maybe a question for you, Liz. So you said, you know, we need to be vocal and to speak mm. out. And clearly, you know, you're working in this very male-dominated um, space. How do you do it? What's your tip to, to the uh, amazing people in this room as to how, how do we take that brave step? So what you do is you think, what is the most outrageous thing I could say? And then you think, should I say it? And you just say yes. You've got to dare yourself. You've got to dare yourself to say stuff. And you know, in my, in my political career, the things I regret are not saying things. Sometimes you can go over the top and you know, create, in my case, you can create a media storm. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, that can be over pretty quickly. And I think you've got to dare yourself because it's, it's that internal discussion often you have of, should I make a fuss about this? Should I say this? And just the default setting should be, yes, I should. That, that's my biggest finding. Are we going to do it? <laughs> <laughs> Any other questions? Yep. Hello. Hi, I have a question up here. Yes, um, go for it. Hi, Liz. Um, I was reading an interesting article um, recently that said uh, girls tend to outperform boys up until the ages of kind of 16, 17, where they do tend to drop out of STEM um, subjects. Mm. How do you think we can address this and how can we get more women studying uh, STEM at university? So, first of all, we, you're right, they start dropping out at 16. One of the reasons is it's compulsory until 16. So a lot of the evidence suggests they've already started losing confidence by age 10. Uh, there was a very interesting program recently about primary school, and it showed the drip, drip, drip of teachers' assumptions about girls and boys in their mm -hmm. class can have a really quite negative effect, and they're not doing it on purpose. It is just the culture that people automatically assume, and girls can often assume that boys are better at mathematics. So. I think it, it starts earlier, it starts with things like toys. I'm a big fan of let toys be toys and not having those gender specific toys that you stereotype girls and boys with. And I think it's about changing our overall culture towards math, science and technology. I, I often have debates with my colleagues because they say, well, yes, you know, we want people to do creative subjects. Well, actually computing, math, they are creative subjects. They're really exciting, they're building a new world but they've been pigeonholed and somehow a bit dull, a bit processy, a bit and not transformational. So I think we also need to change the language because there are still too many adults who say, I wasn't any good at maths when I was at school. You can just focus on something else. It's very difficult to succeed if you don't have those core skills. And I think we need to get that message across. The other thing I'm keen on is actually having clarity on each school what proportion of girls and boys are studying those subjects and actually incentivizing the schools more to encourage girls to carry on once they get to 16. Thank you. 
So if you've got any questions or comments, then please tweet um, at Liz Truss. Um, it's and at let's... Truss, Liz, by the way. I've, I got myself back to front. OK, <laughs> my correction. Yeah, there there we go. <laughs> Follow that. Um, and let's start campaigning to get that female on that £50 note. So Liz, huge thank you for finding the time to come and talk to us Great today. Pleasure. And to really set the tone for what this day is about, which is inspirational women. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you.